All right, we have a repeat guest on the channel. Keyshawn came on the channel a few years back. And at the time, I think he was maybe 19, 20 years old, somewhere around there, maybe 20 years I was, old. I was 20, yeah. Yeah, I think 20 years old. And uh, he was basically telling us his story of how he made a big decision to, instead of go to college uh, when he was 18, he decided to try to get into digital marketing. He made a big decision. And he, you know, obviously he was able to get into digital marketing, but he has some amazing updates for us. So Keyshawn, welcome back to the channel. I'm super excited to uh, update everybody on your progress because we made some predictions uh, a few years back when you were on the channel and maybe those predictions came true. Maybe they didn't. We'll, we'll just have, you guys will just have to wait and see. So Keyshawn, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for coming on again. Thanks for having me, man. It's glad to be back. Awesome. So let's just, just for the people who didn't watch the first video, which we'll probably link the first video, maybe somewhere here or down in the description below, in case you guys want to go back and watch it in more detail. Could you just give me a quick summary of, you know, uh, a little bit about your background and just a quick summary of your story, um, just so we can get people refreshed on, on where you came from and, and what your situation was? Yeah. So back in my senior year of high school, like most high schoolers, I had no idea what the hell I wanted to do. Um, so I was at that point where I was trying these different things to make money. I was building, uh, uh, Shopify sites and things of that nature, looking online. I had doubts about college cause I didn't want to go into debt. I know I, my family didn't have a whole lot of money for me to go to school. Um, I eventually through YouTube of all places, uh, found Seth Jared Himes who offered a course, teach people how to get in digital marketing. Um, somehow, some way I convinced my parents that, this is what I was going to do. I had previous experience building websites and I had a little bit of understanding, but I didn't really know what I was doing. It was kind of just like me trying stuff. And then going through that course, he basically taught me how to get the skills to present to a potential employer to be a, a media buyer um, for a marketing agency. And I went through that whole process. And when I was 19, just about to turn 20, I think it was four days before my 20th birthday, I got uh, my first job offer. And it's been gravy ever since. Love it. Love it. Okay. So I remember when we did the interview a few years back, I think it was maybe like two years back or something. Uh, I basically talked about how, or actually we talked about how most of your friends or a lot of your friends went to college. Yeah. They chose the college yeah. route. And then I made kind of a prediction that a few years from now, when you're 22, 23, they're going to be graduating from college. And they're going to get probably like 40, 40 to 60 K per year jobs, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe around 50 K and most of them, unless they're really lucky with scholarships or family or something like that are going to be anywhere from 50 to 150 K in debt from college. Yeah. And you are going to be in a situation where you've actually saved up money. You've been banking up money. And on top of that, you're probably making pretty close to six figures a year, if not six figures a year. So did, yeah, this, did that come true? <laughs> it absolutely came true. You were deadly accurate. This is crazy. This year, my mom pays to make $107,000. I love so, that. Yeah. I love that. It's, it's congratulations. Congratulations. And and like a lot of people, because, you know, it's, it's funny because I just interviewed somebody else who was inspired by our interview that we did really? two years ago. Yes. Yes. And that's why they, uh -huh. they jumped into the coaching program and then they were able to get the job. And then I told them that I'm about to do another interview with you. And they were just like really excited about that too. So I, I can tell you off camera who it was and stuff like that, if you guys want to connect okay. or whatever, but uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, is they were super inspired by your story. And actually what they said is they were, they were trying to convince their parents to pay for it because they didn't have any money right yeah. they were a kid you know 18 years old they didn't have any any money in fact they actually discovered it when they were 16 17. so wow. so they, they discovered it when they were still in high school and they were like what am i going to do i don't want to go to college and their parents kind of made them go to college a little bit and then they did one semester and they're like i really don't want to do college <laughs> and so they <laughs> they actually that video convinced their parents it's to crazy. let to let them jump into the the, the coaching program and then uh they were able to get a job they were able to get a job immediately. So yeah, yeah, that's uh so you know, these videos really do make 
uh, a difference for people out there. So, you know, I really appreciate you jumping on and sharing your story. Yeah, that's why I love doing them. That's why every time Seth or you hit me up and you guys want to talk, I'm like, man, I know watching videos like this helped me so much. So mm -hmm. if my story could help someone else, uh, it's, yeah, I should share it. So, yeah. And, you know, in this world of AI content and, you know, all like everyone's outsourcing everything to the Philippines and India and like all this stuff. Yeah the one thing you can never outsource is your story, right? Definitely. That's that's the one thing no one else can ever copy. AI can never do it. Like your story is the one thing. And, and that's such a powerful thing in this world, right? So, and uh, yeah, so it's just awesome to have people come on here, share their unique stories. And there's going to be a good amount of people who watch this that just really resonate with your story for, for whatever reason, right? And yeah. uh yeah, it's it's incredible that uh, you're able to do that. So let's talk about like some of the stuff that people are gonna want to hear about. So um how's your work life balance? You know, how's your how's your job satisfaction yeah. in, in the in so job recently? So the reason I was on pace to make 107,000 this year because I took on contract work on top of my W2 work. And during that time, my work life balance was not great. I was work, I was my contract client was the biggest contract client I think any first time like contractor could get. They were spending three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars a year in search, and I was wow. helping manage that with one person, and mm -hmm. it was a lot of work that I was taking on. So during that time, I was just working all the time. It was it was tough, but luckily that recently ended, and now I'm just with my W two job and. I have a lot more freedom now. I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, doing two, it was basically working two jobs at once at that point, mm -hmm. but with just my W2, I mean, my work life balance is great. I get to hang out with friends. I work remote. I don't have to drive into an office anywhere. Um, I love my coworkers. Um, it's just been great. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So have you been kind of uh, like, what, what are some updates since the last video? What's, what's your life been like since the last video? Yeah. When I when I did that first interview, I was living with my parents and I was in uh, my room, the room I grew up in. Uh, now I'm in my own place. I got my own apartment. Um, I've traveled. Uh, I got a girlfriend now. Um, I've been oh. able to do things for family that um, before I couldn't. I helped my older sister get a car when she was having troubles. Um, I've done I've done things that you know. A, like people my age are like in college or like I have debt and they can't do the things that I'm doing. And I've just grown so much appreciation for discovering the course and taking the chance to really learn these skills. So, yeah. Got you. It's been, Got you. it's been great. Life has been, it's been, it's been great. Love it. Love it. Okay. So job satisfaction is great. Work-life balance is great. Um, you said you kind of went through a little bit of a patch there where you basically were working two jobs. Do you feel like you learned a lot, at least from the experience? I definitely did. I definitely did. I, I, I learned a little bit about my limits, um, as well as how to be better at what I do professionally. It was just the client was so big. And then I had all these other um, clients um, at my W2. It was, a, it was really hard to manage mm -hmm. um, being organized and things of that nature. It was, it was, it was just tough, but I think I, I grew from it. And I, um, and hope it'll make me better at my current job. I feel like it's already has because the amount of detail and managing an account that big, you know, taught me to really like focus more so in the details with my current clients at my W2. So. Okay. Got it. So it was a great experience overall. Like you, you learned yeah. a lot, at least there's some silver lining to it for sure. And you, you made it to the, the six figure level for the first time at, I, I think 22 or 23, 23 years old now. 23. 23 years old. Man, congrats. That's awesome. At Thank 23, you. I was still in school. And then I <laughs> I graduated at, I think, 24 or 25. I, I, you know, got a job as a pharmacist, but I was like yeah. re really deep in debt. So before and I was making six figures, but I was oh, really yeah. deep in debt. So, oh, yeah, wow. you are. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about teaching people about this stuff. Like, guys, there's there's alternatives out there, you know, because. I was a poor kid. I came from a poor background. And like when, when I was doing research, I'm like, oh, my, my only option is college. Like I have to, I have to put myself in this much debt to make money. Like this is the only option I have, you know, like that's basically what I thought at the time. Mm -hmm. And guys, there's other options out there. You know, you just, you know, there are other opportunities and other options out there. It's not just college, you know, college is good for certain careers. I still, you know, think that, but 
there's a lot of careers out there and a lot of opportunities that where you don't have to put yourself through that kind of debt and you don't have to put yourself through four to five years of, you know, showing up and, and doing hard tests and like, you know, wasting all that yeah. time. Well, not wasting, but you know what I mean? Like spending all that time um, that you could have been making money, right? That whole time, right? Because that's a lot of opportunity cost. And then what people don't realize is, you know, the average person spends over $100,000 uh, uh, to, to go to college. And then there's also interest on top of that. And then what they don't calculate is there's also opportunity cost because you could have been making money during that four year period. And actually, it's 5.1 years on average that people spend getting their bachelor's degree. So during that five year period, uh, you could have been making money the whole time. So, you know, there's a ton of opportunity costs involved in that, too. So. Yeah, there are other opportunities out there. This is 2024, guys. Like, it's not 1978 anymore. <laughs> like, there's other opportunities yeah. out there uh, besides uh, just going to college and getting a traditional degree. So that's awesome, man. So, what would you say to somebody? Like, what actually? First of all, before we do that, what would you say to your 18 year old self? I mean, you're kind of like doubting. Um, you know, you're not 100% sure. You're like, oh, all my friends are going to college. Yeah, I, I don't know if I, I might be making a terrible mistake. And you're doubting yourself. What would you say to that that 18, 18 year old version of yourself? I would say if you decide to go to college, know what you want to do because you're guaranteed to spend two things and that's time and money. Um, and I would also say focus on skills because the only reason I've been able to accomplish all this because I, 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 I followed like kind of what my dad did. Like my dad, the only reason, like my dad doesn't have a college degree, my mom doesn't have a college degree, but what I was I was smart enough to notice that my dad was able to put food on the table and like provide for us because he had a skill. He knew how to fix cars, he was a mechanic. And he learned that from his dad. And I never found I never found my dad to not be a smart person. And I'm like, I'm smart enough to learn a skill. So I figured, you know, first first uh principles thinking is if I learn a skill that the marketplace values, I'll be able to to um, basically take care of myself. And as long as I have the right resources, which I know I have better resources than my dad ever did, I have the internet for crying out loud. If I stick with something long enough, eventually I'll get an opportunity. And um, that was kind of the reason I went all in. And when I told my folks that, with that level of conviction, um, they basically said, okay, do your thing. Plus like I had siblings, they went to college, you know, like, they didn't know what they wanted to do at that time. I don't think anyone really knows what they want to do when they're like 17, 18 yeah. at all. Yeah. So it's like, and plus like, because of our, our system, like we're allowed to go into so much debt at such a young age, it's crazy. Like, and yeah. I didn't learn about this till like after I got into this and I started like learning about finances and stuff like that. The amount of debt an 18 year old is allowed to go into is insane in this country. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know what I mean? That's, um, sorry, I kind of, no, off no, I, I, I feel you. No, no, I, I totally, I totally get where you're, you're basically giving advice to the younger version of yourself. Yeah. The amount yeah. of debt is, is nuts. And, you know, I've made a lot of videos about that on my channel. Um, it, it's just the, the, the thing is, is the fact that you're able, it's like a blank check, right? It's like basically yeah. just a blank check. And because of the fact that it's a blank check, universities can just keep on jacking up the prices and 18 year old, 18 year olds don't know anything about money. Right. So they're just like, oh, yeah, that's fine. No, yeah, everyone else is doing it. So I'll do it, too. And then the parents are have been kind of I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be really nice with the words I use conditioned to Definitely. think yeah. that right. college is just like this golden ticket. Like everyone has to go to college. It's the golden ticket to success, because a lot of the time when they were young, that was true. Right. Yeah. A lot of the time, you know, in the, in the 80s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that was actually true. You could get any degree, even if it's like a, a communications or any degree and you'd be good, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it's just not that way anymore. A lot of the degrees are not any good. Some of them are good situationally. And then there's a few that are still really good. But yeah, um, yeah it's uh, it's just a totally different situation now. And, you know, the the cost of college has been going up for, you know, 50 years now and the value of college has been going down for 50 years so yeah eventually like if you're a logical person you know those two lines have to intersect it's it's inevitable if one is going down and one is going up they have to intersect 
And mm -hmm. many people would argue that for most degrees, they've already intersected a long time ago. And I, I would make that argument as well. So yeah, yeah it's um, what about parents? Because when I, when I had that under, other interview a few days ago, uh, he said that like he was all sold on it, but his parents were the ones that were not sold on it. So if there's any parents watching this video and they're thinking like, should I do this for my child? Should I, should I buy this for my child? What would you say to the parents? I think like parents, they kind of, they know like their child's level of like maturity. When, when I came to my parents, like I was like super serious. Like it was like one of those sit downs. That's like, like, look, I got to tell you something. So they kind of like got the, the sense of like, this kid is really like really going to do this. I would say if you know that your kid, like if you, if you have a good kid, you know, he's, he does his work in school, doesn't cause many problems. He's responsible. And you know what I'm saying? He can stick to something for a long time. Then I would say, let him do this because college is not going anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. And it's, it's better for them to try to learn a skill something that they'll think they enjoy and that they'll gain experience learning how to do it than guessing what they want to do and then going into all this debt going to college. I would much like if I had a kid, I would much rather than like like want to do like an like a free internship or something like that to see if they even are interested in the industry or like something like that. Or they or at least get a skill that they, they know that it's going to pay them more than the standard like McDonald's or Walmart job. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And them just having that desire in itself is like kind of admirable because like at that at that young age, it's like who who do you know is like trying to learn marketing skills to get mm -hmm. like a marketing job? You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And by the way, guys, if you're confused about like the things we were talking about, uh, we mentioned like SEO earlier, pay-per-click, that kind of thing. There is a free training for digital marketing. It'll be down in the description in the pinned comment below. This training is offered by my business partner, Seth, who is uh, the person who does the coaching program and has gotten all these people uh, incredible results, including Keyshawn. And so um, just go ahead, check that out. It'll be free training. It'll explain what digital marketing is, the different types of digital marketing, the best ones to go into, uh, whether or not it's a good fit for you, and overall, the, generally speaking, how you can get into digital marketing. So definitely check that out. Um, awesome. So, okay. So the parents, uh, that's kind of the message you'd send to them. Um, I think like one big thing for, for parents is they think it's kind of like a just a sign of success if their kid gets a college yeah. degree. You know, I think that's one huge thing. And, and you know, it's just one thing to say about that. Is yeah. What would you say? I have a feeling like you have to be, if you want results that most people don't get, you have to be willing to do things that most people don't do. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's like a good counter to that. Like, I know like everyone's going to college, but not everyone. Some people are just going because, the brother went or the, the brother went or they're being told to go. They're not going because they have a definite aim of learning a certain set of skills to get in a career. They're just going. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Some people are like, they're not even taking it serious the first few years. I'd say um, you, have, you have to be willing to go against the grain in some aspect to get results that people don't get. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And there's probably a time when college wasn't really that well known yeah. and then the people that were going to college were kind of going against the grain and yeah. it was it was probably one of those things where you know a lot of people would like make fun of people going to college like what are you a nerd like what do you want to go to college why don't you just go do a trade job or something right yeah. um and then those people were kind of going against the grain and it was actually an incredible opportunity for them and things just things just change over time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just that it's just that simple. And you know that better than anyone being in marketing, right? Like things change yeah. all the time. Something that worked two years ago mm -hmm. probably doesn't work now, right? And it's the same thing for college or anything else. It's a little slower, obviously, but it's the same thing. Like the the best moves, the best things to do change over time. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, right now obviously like this might be the best thing to do possibly 50 years from now maybe it'll be college again who knows but yeah. right now this is a huge opportunity and like tons of people are crushing it i mean 
how many other careers have 23 year olds making six figures a year? Not many, you know, even the highest paying college degrees, engineering degrees, you don't see very many 23 year olds making six figures a year. That's like super, super rare. So yeah, you're absolutely crushing it, man. Um, Is there anything I should have asked you, but I didn't? I would think uh, one of the questions I had in my interview with Seth was like, have you had any troubles like being the young person that's getting into this industry? Like, have you had any Mm. problems with like ageism and stuff like that? How how have you dealt with, uh, what's that thing called? Where like imposter syndrome, how have you dealt with that? Um, So I had a situation at my current job, actually, this year. It was the first time I joined this team at this company, like the average person at my company is like 30, 40 years old with kids. It's like every job I've ever had, I've been like the youngest one there. Um, And for this situation, I had like this little error when we were uh, creating campaigns um, and I was working with this one guy. I came in as a senior advertising strategist and he was a level before me. He was definitely going to get promoted because he was doing the work of a senior advertising strategist. But I think because I came in and I was a level higher than him and I had like a few errors with making campaigns, it kind of built a little bit of resentment. And then over time, it kind of just b- burst one day on a call. And he literally told me like, to my face, well, well, not to my face, but on a call, like you think you know, but you don't know, right? Mm. Basically kind of discrediting like what I've done to this point in my career. And that was tough for me. It was really tough for me because like for a long time, when I first started this, I always, I had that imposter syndrome. like, man, I don't, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I always felt like maybe I got lucky doing this, but in that moment, I had to look back on all the things I did up until this point. And um, basically stand on all the things that I've done that were very successful. And I kind of had to brush that off. And eventually I had a conversation with him and he apologized and we just got over it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think for people who are going to take this path and you're young and you have that imposter syndrome, I would say use the fact that you're young to your advantage because the more that you do, the more experience you get and the more confident you are, you're going to you're going to be. You just have to keep going. You just have to keep going past that point. There's going to be times where you think you're not prepared for something. Like I remember at my first job um, before I left, I was 19 years old and they were going to have me fly out. And I was going to talk about how to help these business owners who owned appliance stores who were like in their 40s and 50s. And I'm supposed to tell them as a 19 year old how. Google ads can help their business and how they should utilize it. Mm-hmm. Now, up until that point, I had been managing their ad accounts. I've been on calls with them, but like I had to give a presentation like about this. And it it was it was tough for me to do. And when I looked back and I just kept remembering all the work I was doing in their accounts, all the results I was getting, up until that moment when I gave the speech, I wasn't nervous anymore because I just kept mm. pushing through. So that's the advice I would give to someone who's young uh, trying to get into this is that you have to keep going mm-hmm. um, and believe in yourself. Love it. Love it. All right. That's awesome. Um, cool. So yeah, I, I think, I think that's about all. Um, I think I asked you pretty much all the questions. I just, uh, I think this is pretty epic that, you know, we had that conversation a few years ago and I had that prediction <laughs> and then, and then it came <laughs> through. Got it right. it's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's pretty epic, man. It's like all your friends are probably graduating from college and they're just beginning yeah. their careers. Right. And they're going to be making yeah. probably 50 K a year, just like you were when you first started. Uh, but yeah. but they had to go through four or five years of college and then, you know, get a bunch of student loan debt, most likely, too. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you it's pretty much a cheat code, guys. And I was actually right before the call, um, we were kind of talking about one another cheat code, uh, which is you can make money from the U.S. and then you could travel internationally. Right. So you can live in other countries and you get to explore the world, of course, which is awesome. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. And I've been doing for the last three years. Um, But more than that, you can pretty much location hack. Uh, So when you have a fully remote job, you can make money from the U.S. and then live in a place that has a much lower cost of living, which is something that if you want to, it's something you can absolutely do. And so you can live like a king on a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars a month, 
in many places in the world. And, um, you know, if you're make, making like 5k per month, even, you know, four or 5k per month, you are absolutely crushing it because you're banking like $3,000 a month, $4,000 a month if you're doing that. So um, that's another thing you're doing. And then, of course, you you would be banking even more because, you know, you're, you're up to the, you know, six figure yeah. level. So that's a that's another possibility, uh, potentially, that, that you you could explore in the future. I know a lot of people that have done that. I've run into tons of digital digital nomads traveling the <laughs> world uh, that are that are doing that. And a lot of them are working in digital marketing. Digital marketing is one of the common careers. So that's another kind of thing we were talking about off camera. And right. um yeah, it's just what what do you what are your thoughts on that? Man, I'm definitely interested in it. I just I don't know where I would go. <laughs> I don't know where I would go. Um, excuse me, my bad. But it's just I definitely want to do something like that. I don't know if I would want to live there, but I definitely want to go uh, uh, overseas for the first time. I haven't left the country, so I definitely want to see what it's like in other places. Yeah, you could always just like you know take a two week period and just travel, just knowing that you're going to be working while you travel. Um, yeah. and that's, yeah, that's not a problem either. Right. So a lot of people do that as well. And then, and then you come back home two weeks later and then you don't even have to take any time off, you know? So that's, that's Gosh. another perk of working a fully remote job, uh, in digital marketing. As oh, long Lord. as you get the work done, that's all they care about. Right. They, they don't care about if you're working, you know, as long as you get the work done. So they don't care about where you're working from. So, uh, yeah. Um, I just think that was pretty epic. And of course, editor, if you could roll that clip um of, of me making the prediction whenever whenever that part of the video pops up definitely roll that because i think that's going to be pretty epic one thing i i did want to ask you about i remember we briefly talked about this because you talked about how you were running ads for shopify like you're, you're trying some different make money yeah. online opportunities and at some point in the future you might want to start your own business and i was i was kind of telling you that when you do digital marketing or when you do a, a skill like the ones that i recommend on my channel you learn what's known as in-demand skills. So basically, it's another cheat code, which is you're getting paid to learn in-demand skills. Yeah. Right? Most people pay. Most people have to go to college to learn in-demand skills. And a lot of the time, they're actually not in-demand. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas you're getting paid to learn in-demand skills. And when you learn those skills, if you do decide to do, you know, do freelance, uh, contract work like you were talking about, start your own business, that kind of thing, make money on the side, uh, it's going to be much, much easier for you to be able to do that. And so, yeah, what are, what are your what are your thoughts on that now? Um, just like the skills that you've learned. And if you if you know, if you did ever want to start a business, do yeah. you think it would be quite a bit easier? I'm so happy I learned these skills because the only reason that con uh, that contracting opportunity came up because I have these skills and I was making connections at work. You know, um, a guy went to another company. Um, I told him my story while we were working together and then he remembered me and that's how that whole situation came about. It was my first time like forming an LLC, working with a client. It was, it was, it was great. And then came, uh, comes tax time. And then I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to have to like, cause I'm saving up all this money from this, from these client billings, thinking that I'm going to have to give all this to the government. And then come that time, it's like, I get all these benefits. I get a yeah. expense this and that and the third i'm like wow and it turns out they owed the government owed me money by the end of the year so <laughs> i think um digital marketing is definitely a skill that if you want to go out on your own you can definitely do um it's opened my eyes because i've always i was just from the framework of working for a company but now i'm also thinking about man what if i went out and um, i found some different clients that are in the same niche for my w-2 job and i just get on the phone and have a conversation with them and sell them on my skills instead of this agency making all this money. I could have that as my own thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely opened my eyes um, to different opportunities, with the skills that I have. And I think for a lot of jobs, it's not really possible. Yeah, it's definitely opened my eyes to a few different opportunities. That's awesome. And I, I think one big thing about that is you have the choice, right? You have, yeah. you have the freedom to choose. If you want to just kind of have more of a chill job where you're just kind of, you know, just doing, you know, just just monitoring things and just updating things here and there and just making sure everything's good. Uh, once in a while, you can definitely get that in digital okay. marketing. And then if you want to have more of a job where you're much more hands on, you're learning new skills, you're constantly, you know, mm -hmm. doing new things, you can definitely get that as well. And then if you want to start your own business, you want to freelance, you want to get contract work, you can you can do that. And it's just like you have the choice.
If you, mm-hmm. you can put your foot on the gas pedal and speed up if you want, and then you can take your foot off and, and put your foot on the brakes whenever you want to. But in a lot of other jobs, you don't have any choice, right? There's, there's like one option, maybe two options. Most like, you know, and usually it's just one option, right? You, you really don't have much yeah. choice at all. It's like one path that you have to go down. Uh, whereas in digital marketing, there's so many paths that you can go down and it's, and it's just, uh, it's great to have that, that feeling of you're not stuck because that is a feeling that I had so badly when I was a pharmacist, I just felt like I was stuck. Like this is, this is my only option as a pharmacist. Uh, and I'm just going to have to go down this career path. And I remember looking at my boss and then my boss's boss and I did a, I, I actually knew how much they were making. And I did a calculation in my head and I'm like, my boss is working 60 hours. I'm working 40 hours a week. My boss is working 60 hours a week. And my boss's boss is working 80 hours a week. And when you do the calculation, they're actually not making that much more per hour than I am. So I could make almost as much money as them if I just took on extra hours if I wanted to. So I'm like, what do I have to look forward to if my boss is working 60 hours a week and and only making 50% more than me, or maybe like a little bit more than that, like 55% more than me. And then my boss's boss is working 80 hours a week and he's only making a tiny bit more than double what I'm making. Like what, what do I have even have to look forward to in this career? You know, I just felt like totally stuck. There's no progression yeah. for me. So yeah, it was, uh, it was, a, it was not the best feeling to have. And, and that's definitely not a problem when you're in digital marketing. So that's, that's definitely a good thing to, to touch on. So Keyshawn, thank you so much again for your time. Maybe we'll have to get a, a third update. We might have to do a trilogy, a three-peat, right? Yeah. We might have to do a three-peat here in a couple of years. I know people uh, love watching your videos. Like, you know, I just interviewed somebody who, who watched your video and his parents and uh, they, they loved it and they were inspired by it. So we might have to do a three-peat here in a couple of years and see where you're at. Okay. Maybe maybe you own your own agency here in a couple of years, right? <laughs> so who knows, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, hey, I, I, I'm not making a prediction this time, but who knows? Maybe you own your own agency <laughs> here in a couple of years. Uh, but that would be funny if that prediction came true, too. That would be funny. <laughs> so awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on the channel. And uh, awesome talking to you, as always. And uh, have a good one, man. You too.